Hello guys and welcome to a new Broken Arrow video today by me Vulcan. In this one I'm going to be creating a brand new Russian battle group. I wanted to make this video not only to show off the units available but also give you guys some tips and tricks on some of the units you might want to pay attention to in the open beta and how they work. I'm not going to be going into detail on every unit because you guys can do that yourself on the 31st of January when the game will be in open beta for a couple of weeks and it is available to everyone so make sure to uh, download it and give it a go. Uh, I also don't have every single piece of knowledge in this game so if you are watching and think I missed something or feel like I got something wrong or know some more then feel free to share it in the comments so that other people can check it out. But let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to select Russia, of course. We're going to select the two specializations that are available to us. Currently, there is the VDV and the Guards Tank Brigade. There will be more specializations available when the game releases. But for now, let's just quite quickly jump into the Recon tab. We're going to select the VDV Vervitka, just so I can take you guys through the information panel on this right-hand side quickly so you understand what you're looking at. First of all, we have the armor value of a unit. So in this case, these guys have seven armor. We've got 20 health points. Each individual infantry man has four health, I believe, in every single squad that I've seen so far. Uh, so in this case, we have a squad size of five. Then we have the optics here. I'm not sure if that determines 1,700 meters. I'm not quite sure what the number means, but higher is better. Then we have stealth, higher is better again. And then we have the forward speed of the unit and we have the weight of the unit. Now this determines how much space it takes up in a transport. Um, although infantry, there are infantry slots like seats in vehicles that your infantry take up as well, but the weight can also be a factor. Then we have the abilities on the right hand side here. So airdrop in this case, these guys can be airdropped from aircraft. They can sprint, they can drop smoke, and they have laser designation, which means they can laser guide bombs into targets which is really cool then at the top here we have the price and then underneath all of this we have the weapons that they use so in this case the ak-74 rmo the gp-34 grenade launcher the rpg-73 rocket and the svd sniper or marksman rifle Underneath that we have the customization options for this squad and any other vehicles and stuff that we'll see as we go on. Uh, but in this case we can switch the VDV Rajvedka from loud to suppressed weapons. And I'm not sure if this actually makes them harder to spot after they've started firing. But in terms of the statistics that it actually shows that it changes, um, it does increase their damage, it does increase their suppression and uh, slightly makes the dispersion worse I would say because um, it technically increases dispersion. Anyway, for now, what I'm going to be doing is we're going to be switching this to simple view um, because for the purpose of this video, it's going to be a lot easier for me to talk things through in the simple view. So this is going to show us the number of guns, then the effective range of the unit, so 400 meters in this case. Then we have the amount of ammo that they have, and if you hover over it, it tells you the caliber. Then we have the penetration of the weapon, white arm or white number means kinetic penetration and then the orange number means heat penetration so in this case the rpg 73 for example has 750 millimeters of heat penetration and then we have the damage so how much damage each of the weapons does and then we have the accuracy of the weapon so we're going to keep it on that there is another button up here that looks like a little fill icon that is the customization Certain units can have different camos, so I'll show that off as we go on. There's also a pin button where you can pin the units so that you can select a different unit and compare it. But we're not going to really be doing that much throughout this video. Anyway, starting in the recon tab, uh, actually, before we move on, I'm just going to show you the information panel for a vehicle uh, because it lo looks slightly different. Uh, you can see here we have a bunch of numbers, top, front, rear, side. This is all your armor. White numbers are, again, kinetic pen, um, kinetic armor, and the orange one is heat armor. So 30 front kinetic and heat, and 20 on the top sides and rear for the VMD2. You can see this also has amphibious trait. For vehicles, there is a reverse speed as well as a forward speed. 
and in this one we also have the seat count so you can only have squads of a number up to five in the BMD2. So that's pretty much it to go over for the right hand side here but let's start throwing in units into the deck. So on the top side or above this line we have all of the infantry recon that we can bring in so the VDV Razvedka, the VDV snipers and the VDV Spesnaz. Uh, the VDV Rosvedka come with the RPG 7D3 and when they're upgraded to suppressed weapons can pack a punch. So a pretty nice unit for infiltration because this RPG can be used for taking out vehicles quite effectively. What I'm going to do is I am going to add some of these and we're going to put them in the Typhoon VDV. Now this is a unit that you're really going to want to pay attention to in the open beta. The reason for that is because you can upgrade it with the 2A42 autocannon. And this thing is really, really strong, not only because it's a decent 30mm autocannon, but it's on a platform that is really, really fast. So the Typhoon VDV has a 100 speed uh, in forwards, which is really, really good. So... This can zoom around in the back line, drop off the infantry where you want to infiltrate, and then it can continue and go and destroy loads of units in the back line, uh, particularly things like enemy patriots or the high Mars and things like that, like sort of the heavier units that are going to be sitting on the back side of the map. Really, really good for hunting those down. So definitely worth bringing in the Typhoon uh, VDV uh, with the auto cannon upgrade. Another thing I will note is that infiltration is super, super important in this game at the moment. So making sure you do get your recon units into the back line uh, using stealth is really, really important. Uh, in this case, the BMD2, the BMD4M haven't had too much luck with them, to be honest. Uh, the BTRD is just a worse transport, in my opinion, and the MI8 is kind of there if you want to do heli drops. Uh, but for the most part, Typhoon VDV. Same with the snipers, we will bring in a card of snipers, again in the Typhoon VDV, and the Spesnaz in, you guessed it, the Typhoon VDV. Now, the numbers of these will vary based on how many points you want to spend here, but what I would say you want to do when you make a new battle group is decide what units you want to add, and then adjust the numbers of the units afterwards. Because then you can determine exactly how many transports you're going to need, because in this game you can bring in more than one unit, in a transport. So in this case, uh, these guys are a squad size of three, the sniper squad. So if I were to say bring them in the BTRD, I can actually fit three sniper squads in one BTRD. So I'd only have technically have to bring in one transport if I wanted to bring in all of the snipers at the same time. Um, you can obviously bring them in on foot as well and then send your transport back to pick them up, which is mostly what you're going to do in this case but you also just want the typhoon vdvs so <laughs> why not bring them in um, there are some other options here like the rio stat and the brm 3k the brm 3k is pretty good because it has an auto cannon as well pretty good for sneaking around the back line you can upgrade this to have a 57 mil gun and an hgm which is pretty cool so definitely a strong vehicle once it's upgraded there's the sarmat this thing can be upgraded with a metasator gem, minigun, a grenade launcher, another really good unit to pay attention to. There's also the Recon T90, and this thing can be an absolute beast because it has a little bit more stealth than a normal tank, and it has really good optics. So it can kind of spot for itself. It can accompany other tanks when you're engaging enemies, and yeah, really, really good. There are the drones here, but honestly... I haven't had too much luck using these. I find that their recon capability is actually quite limited. They don't often actually spot things as you'd expect and then just end up getting shot down by long range radar A. So I've kind of started to avoid using drones, but honestly, it's fun. Try them out, see how you get on, but I'm not gonna be adding them today. So what I am gonna be adding is the T90 and I am going to be adding the Optronic Mast because that further increases the optics from 1700 to 2000 which is really really nice the machine gun upgrades not really necessary so you can save your five points there but otherwise nice to have that upgraded and a solid tank for your uh, battle group i am going to be adding sarmats as well i'm always not sure what i quite want to have these as like the minigun's really nice and the message gem is useful i think the minigun's generally like more useful 
uh, because it can really dunk on infantry pretty hard and the minigun has reasonable penetration the main thing is it just fires really fast so it can do a lot of damage very quickly to light armored vehicles so we're going to uh, put a few sarmats in there they're really cheap as well great for dotting around and then we're going to work out how much extra infantry we want so i'm going to definitely add another sniper for sure the vdv spetsnaz we need to decide if we want thermobaric launchers or metastated gems the thermobaric launcher is really nice but i don't think it's necessary because we're going to be taking engineers in the infantry tab so i'm actually going to load them up with the metis and um use that i actually haven't tried out this combination yet but i noticed the metis was available to the spetsnaz when i was checking out the uh, russians before making this video so i'm going to throw that in there for now and we're going to actually take all of these because having a unit that is stealthy that can also use an gem seems like a pretty effective combination and then we're going to add as many vdd razvedka as we can we'll probably go for like two vdd razvedka with two more typhoons so we've got a total of eight typhoons with eight infantry squads plus a t90 plus four sarmats and that's going to be 1450 out of 1500 points spent in the recon tab which is more than enough I, technically i could add another sarmat but for now we're going to leave it you don't have to use all of the points in every tab if you do you're actually going to run out of points overall for your battle group so bear that in mind uh, let's just head to the infantry okay so in here the ingenergy these guys <laughs> engineering i will absolutely butcher these names i apologize these guys are fantastic potentially the best anti-infantry squad in the game they have the two rpg 7v2s which come with a thermobaric um, thermobaric um, explosive on them really really nice they can also take out light vehicles with this so super effective squad and they do have sprint they do have smoke move pretty fast can be brought in the boomerang the boomerang is going to be another sort of standout unit transport here because the b10 a little bit slow because it's tracked and the t15 <laughs> it's an absolute powerhouse but it's super expensive the boomerang reasonably priced transport and can be upgraded with the boomerang bm module which is actually really really nice uh, it's a 30 mil auto cannon and has corner age gems so super nice uh, you can also further upgrade it with armor to make it better against uh, kinetic and heat rounds and it also gives it the active protection which is which is really nice so to be honest you don't really need the up armor but for extra plus five points doesn't hurt but it does make the transport really really expensive so in this case for these particular units I'm just going to upgrade the armor on these and that's it. We're going to leave them with just the machine gun, 55 point transport with the engine energy. And we're definitely going to be moving them all the way up. So these are eight man squads. So that this carries eight men. So technically you're going to need four transports for those. They're really cheap transports and they can be used for other things. So I think it's worth to bring all of the boomerangs there. Uh, we will probably want some man pads. The Verba and Igla are your options. The Verba has 2,100 meter range, and the Igla has 2,000 meter range. The Verba slightly better. It's a four man squad versus a five man squad, though, so you get a little bit extra uh, firepower against ground units with the Igla squad. But the Verba also gets two launchers in the squad. And that's really really important so in terms of dedicated man pads these are super strong so we're going to be bringing those as well again in up armored boomerangs and this time around because there are only four man squads we can bring two of these in one boomerang so i'm only going to take two boomerangs for four verbers the other units we're going to be looking at is potentially the vdv metis the metis is not a crazy long range weapon, but the combination with the Cord HMG is really, really nice for dealing with uh, light armored vehicles. There's also the guards. Guards are super strong. Eight man squad um, have the RPG 28, 
which has very solid penetration against armor, 1000 millimeters of heat penetration, can pretty much defeat most vehicles at close range. The other option for sort of line infantry is the VDV DSH. These guys um, have the PKM, but they're only a five man squad. So bear that in mind. And they're RPG 650 millimeters of heat penetration. So we're gonna be going with the guards here. Again, you guessed it, in the boomerang. Funny that. Uh, I think the boomerang's really, really good. In this case, what I'm gonna do is actually make this boomerang upgraded. So we're gonna give it the boomerang BM module and we're gonna give it the up armor plus the active protection. There you go, looking amazing. Now the thing is with Broken Arrow, what you can do is bring in, say these guards in this boomerang. You aren't forced to bring in the infantry with the transport that you selected them with. So I don't have to max out these, but the K17 boomerang is really, really nice with that upgrade. So worth bringing in. Now, aside from that, we have a little bit of points left. So I'm just thinking maybe we bring in the Cornet squad because we get two Cornets, which are 1,600 meter range, 1,000 millimeter penetration heat rounds. I just realized I haven't had it in the <laughs> simple view uh, so that I can point that out. We'll just keep it in this view now since I've been explaining it like that. And this can be brought in with the BTRD. Now the BTRD can carry 10 men and this is a five man squad. So once again, we're gonna be going for as many Cornets as we can and we'll just go for two BTRDs. And that's gonna take us to 2,230 infantry um, out of 2,250. So that's pretty good. We're gonna leave it at that. The other options here are pretty nice. I think the uh, grenade launchers are okay. Um, they're nothing like special. Decent DPS against enemy infantry. The VDV DSH, really good if you want to uh, do airdropping. Um, that's something that they're good for. Otherwise, guards are on the ground. Um, the Ingenieri are on the ground as well. So that's what we're going to be going with in this case. It's going to be like more of like a balanced group rather than sort of like a special airdrop. Now moving into the vehicle tab. There's not a crazy amount to choose from here. But the BMP Terminator, pretty good. Cornet, it's okay. <laughs> the Sprut, it's okay. <laughs> the Sturm, not really very good. The Armata, very good. T80U is okay. T90 and T90M are pr pretty good once you give them upgrades. So what we're going to do is we're definitely going to bring in both of the Armatas. And the Armatas are pretty strong. Um, they have an effective range of 1,400 meters with a 500 to 1000 millimeter kinetic penetration. Now this kinetic penetration, uh, super important. The other thing you might notice is it has 850 millimeters of kinetic frontal armor and 1400 millimeters of heat frontal armor. Now this is pretty insane because it's almost impervious to anything at long range and it has active protection and it has smoke. So it can smoke itself off in a pick pickle against enemy HGMs and it can also um, use active protection to take out those HGMs as well. Um, just be aware that this is vulnerable to top attack quite a lot because it only has like 120 millimeters of top attack um, heat armor. Um, and side armor and rear armor for kinetic rounds is also um, a vulnerability. So keep the armor facing forwards and these guys will do wonders for you. I'm going to be adding some T90Ms and we're going to be busting out the upgrades for these. I don't think upgrading the machine guns really necessary. Uh, the PKT is like a 600 millimeter or 600 meter range machine gun. The cord definitely quite nice because it gets the extra effective range and it's more effective against light vehicles and helicopters. But in this case, that's not what you're gonna be using it for. And if you are, then you're in trouble. <laughs> But what we are going to be doing is giving the active protection and the explosive reactive armor because this significantly increases the side armor against heat rounds and it gives you the active protection. The active protection is actually the most important part. But the 15 points for the soft case explosive reactive armor on the side armor is pretty nice. Then again, when I look at it, 
It does push it to 340 points. 320, probably more than enough. You just got to manage your, your front armor. I think that's fine. So we'll go for a couple of T90Ms. Now it is a good idea to add units like the T80U, a unit that can provide good HE penetration at a cheap cost. So this still has a gun that has 350 to 700 millimeters of kinetic penetration for only 180 points. Now that's going to be able to get through the side armor of pretty much any main battle tank. So if you manage to ambush a tank at close range, like I could have two T80Us and just pretty much one bang an enemy tank at close range. So for flanks and for positions where you can ambush, having a cheaper tank with kinetic rounds is really, really nice. You can, of course, upgrade these in order to have like active protection. Once again, active protection is super strong, so it's potentially worth it in this case. Um, the other one is giving you extra optics, and there's also the T80UA, which gives you electronic countermeasures. Now, both of these actually significantly increase the front armor, but then also significantly increase the cost. So I think what I'm going to do is we'll, we'll go for the UM. We get the extra frontal armor. We get the extra optics, and it's just a, a solid tank. Next thing I'm going to do is add terminators. Terminators, really, really fun to use. Uh, adding grenade launchers to it is really, really cool. And you can also add extra explosive reactive armor on the side armors if you need to, but I don't think it's necessary. In this case, we're just going to go for a second BMPT Terminator 2, and that's going to be our vehicle tab done. So you're going to be very reliant on the T-14 Armata. You can sneak T-80UMs in close range if you need to, and the T-90s. Both of these tanks are pretty good for the longer range engagements. So let's just head back to the main tab, and we'll jump into the support. Support tab, actually really cool. Uh, we have quite a lot of options here, as you can see. There's a Tunguska, the Vina. This is a mortar. We've got long-range artillery. There's the Drock, which is a small jeep with a mortar on it. The Nona mortar. The Grad, like MLRS, classic. The Book Anti-Air. We've got the Derivasia. Derivasia? <laughs> this thing is actually a pretty mean auto cannon anti-air unit. We've got our transports, which bring in supply or potentially your infantry. Uh, the Strela 10M, really reliable infrared AA. The Ante, which is a long range radar AA, or and like it, it can also intercept uh, ballistic missiles. Then we've got the Tor and the Buratina. I'm, I'm pretty sure all radar AA can, can intercept ballistic missiles. Um, that might not be the case, but I'm sure you guys will let me know in the comments if it's not. And then we have the Buratino. This thing is actually nasty. So what we're going to be doing is probably somewhat ignoring the Tunguska. It's funny how this game, this this particular unit, just never seems to perform well in games. <laughs> it's like a pretty pretty beasty unit, but I think the combination of infrared plus like radar guided sort of it's like the it's like the wrong way way wrong way around almost. It's like you want to sort of manually fired cannon and then guide like long range guided missiles. <laughs> but this is like the opposite way around, which is kind of weird. Anyway, pretty effective when it has radar up, but we're going to be going for other options. I'm going to be whacking in the Strela 10M. Um, we will be keeping keeping the Strela 10MN on it. If we change, it actually somewhat lowers the effective range. The Sosna though is pretty good uh, with the 2400 meter range so it's tempting to upgrade to it but it does increase the price significantly and I've had pretty good success with the Strela 10 MN anyway. Um, actually one thing I can do with this one um, is show you camos but actually we could go back just a second to vehicles in the tank tab and we can change them here. There you go. So you guys can see how this works a little bit. Very cool. We're going to go with this one for the T14 Armata. But I'm not going to mess around with that too much more, but I just wanted to show it off quick. Anyway, so we've got the Strata 10M. Uh, but we'll probably want to add books. We'll probably want to add an ante. 
Um, so the way that I'm thinking about this is we want kind of three lines of AA. You want like infrared AA for dealing with helicopters. You want like shorter range radar AA for dealing with aircraft. And then you want longer range radar AA for dealing with aircraft. Now, uh, both of these have some serious range. Um, 3,000 meters and 3,800 meters on the map. That's actually a, a very, very long way. When they have their radar on, they can fire far, um, further. Um, I'm not sure if the statistics here show the radar range or they show the like non-radar range. I would assume that 3,800 meters is the plus radar range regardless. Um, I think it's a good idea to have all three here. The Buratino you got to take it really, really, really good. Uh, and it's actually kind of worth upgrading to the um, TOS 1A uh, because the munitions in this are pretty incredible. And then there is extra ammo potentially if you need it, but as long as you're not putting it in harm's way, it should be fine. Um, this can actually somewhat protect you against like bombs and stuff. So there is an argument to be made that it's it's worth upgrading that, but we're going to stick with the 250 points for now there. Then we're going to want something that can kind of direct fire things. So either the Nonna or the Vina. Now the Nonna has, but both of these have 120 millimeter rounds. So in this case, the Nonna is a lot cheaper. We're going to be going for the Nonna. The Nonna uh, can have the SM. The SM variant has guided um, munitions but requires lasing so we saw like the VDV Rasvetka in the recon tab can use a laser and that will match up with the laser guided munition in this case and um, they can use that to guide in these munitions but I don't think it's necessary for the mortars so we're just going to turn it off and I am going to put all four of these mortars in there uh, another good option is actually the tour I think I've had some pretty good uh Pretty good luck with the with the tour so far. So it's tempting to put that in, but I think I'm okay with Estrella, the book, the ante uh, so far. Uh, so what I'm going to do, we're going to pump up the Estrellas a little bit. We're going to add a couple of books. We're going to have a couple of antes, and we're going to leave it at that for now. I might come back and add some more. Oh, actually, one thing we mustn't forget, of course, is the supply. Now, in this case, what I'm going to do is we're going to throw in the smaller supply trucks. Now there is something to kind of bear in mind with supply. The way that a lot of people recommend you do supply in this game is you create like a big supply dump near the back of the map and then you ferry it back and forwards with smaller supply trucks. So in this case the Kamaz can carry 3000 supply. So you just pick up 3000 supply, create a smaller dump uh, further up. Whereas if you bring in like the Kamaz with the 15000 supply then it can't split it up individually. You have to like use smaller transports in order to do that. Um, it can't like just drive around the map and drop off as much as you want. And I believe that's intentional for balancing purposes. Otherwise you'd end up with like loads of small dumps everywhere, which would be kind of obnoxious. Anyway, regardless, small supply truck in there and the way we're going to get our big supply dump in is probably just by using helicopters. So the Mi-26 here, pretty good option for bringing in a massive supply dump on the back side. Um, it just depends how much you really want to invest into your helicopters. And since this is our next tab, we'll, we'll do this now. So there's a couple of ways that I like to do my helicopters. I like to have like a dedicated HGM platform and then I like to have like a, a, a sort of dedicated anti-infantry platform and then maybe hybrid them with air-to-air -air if necessary. Air-to-air -air helicopters, particularly like Cobras, um, Stingers are very good. So um, quite often people will use Stingers on Cobras or like infrared AA. I'm not sure if it's exactly the Stinger that they use, but uh, regardless, being able to defend yourself against other helicopters it, with your helicopters is, is pretty nice. So yeah, it's something we've got to work out. And there's a lot of customization when it comes to both the helicopters and the aircraft, especially because the way it works is you change the pylons. So we have inner, middle, and outer pylons. 
and we can change each one. So for the KF-52, I actually like to use the gun pod. I like to use rockets. And then I like to have Igla Antia. And basically what it makes the KA-52 become is a unit that can really exploit uh, positions where you know you've destroyed enemy AA. And it can basically ride in there and use its 23, um, the GSH-23, plus the rockets in order to kill infantry and support units very, very quickly. Uh, plus, the Igla makes it a good option somewhat for attacking enemy helicopters. Uh, and it's relatively cheap at 225 points. So we're going to throw in one of those. And then what I'm going to do is have the MI-28, one of these MI-28s, for dealing with enemy vehicles. So the Lemu here, I believe it's a HE, yeah, it's a HE missile. Uh, we're not going to need that. We're going to want the Vikia 8 gems. So that's what we're going to be adding in this case. And for the inner pylons, I guess we technically could go for HE missiles, but the rocket's probably fine. So that's what we're going to be doing here. And the reason we're bringing in the MO24 or 28NM is because it gets much better optics. It's basically a really nice recon helicopter able to spot for itself and give itself the sort of information in order to fire off these HGMs super effectively. And it gets 12 Vikias. Uh, just be wary that it might get uh, dove by enemy aircraft. The Mi-35 also actually a reasonably op uh, good option because it can come with the Vitebsk, which is a sort of electronic countermeasure and um, like an electronic countermeasure unit, which is really, really nice. Uh, makes this thing actually a lot more tanky and then it's got loads of pylons if you want to use those uh, this is actually a pretty good option for if you want to do like an anti-air platform um, you can put loads of eaglers on it so yeah pretty cool pretty cool and then has uh, attackers as well but i think vikias are better than attackums i want to say uh so yeah anyway we're going to be having vikias in this case um plus that. So that's the MI-28 done. We are going to want the MI-28 here. I could also just opt to bring in like MI-8 MTV cargoes um, in order to provide my supply, but we're going to go with the big boy just because it's fun. And uh, it can actually bring in quite a lot of stuff all in one go uh, should you want to do so. Uh, can we change any camo on this? We can. That's pretty cool. All right, anyway, so what we're going to do is we will add another MI-28NM. The KA-52 is more a aircraft that I'm just going to be using when I can exploit lack of enemy AA. But in the meantime, the MI-28NM is going to be useful for keeping pressure on US armor, which is something that is very, very oppressive in the open beta at the moment. Finally, we have the air tab. Now, the air tab in the Russian deck is pretty cool. We get access to the IL-76MD. 78 or 76 MD. You're going to want to bring one of these if you want to do airdrops. Then we have the SU-25. I actually really like using SU-25s for rocket runs uh, rather than anything else. I think they're really good for just sort of like direct strafing runs with ATGMs gems to pick off tanks potentially as well. Then we got the SU-30. This is probably better used as a... Actually, it does have access to the loads of cabs. Now, cabs are pretty good because they are like laser guided bombs <laughs> which are 1500 kilograms so that is a pretty pretty nasty payload when you start to think you can you can make all of these actually not all of the pylons but you can have three 1500 uh, kilogram cabs on it plus whatever else on the other pylons i think the su-34 is probably the better option for using cabs 
It doesn't get as much payload, but I think you can bring it in cheaper if you pick um, some different options here. The other nice thing is like if you bring in like anti-radiation missiles, basically seed, you can kind of cover yourself as you bring in the cab smart bomb. And then we add some like R77s for like anti-air uh, with some like ECM pods or just keep it empty. ECM pods are pretty nice though as it allows this thing to survive a lot better. So we're going to drop that in. It allows us to bomb with the 1500 kilogram smart bomb. Uh, we can get a little bit of seed going, a couple of anti-air missiles just in case, and then ECM pods to keep it alive. I actually kind of like that combination. There's a lot to mess around with here. I wouldn't say there's any particular best setup for your air in the Russians, uh, but yeah, just play around with it, see what you like. The SU-35S is pretty good as well. I think having like ECM pods and stuff is like super important for these aircraft because they can become kind of difficult to control the skies, but the SU-35S does come with a lot of missile payload for taking on enemy aircraft. And that is something that it's basically going to be used for. You can drop the ECM pods into this and then just spam a load of missiles at your enemies. And then there's the SU-57, which is uh, slightly more stealthy. It does have the extra stealth value and uh, can be used to obviously engage enemy aircraft as well. Comes naturally with the electronic countermeasures, so you don't have to add the pods to do that. Um, for the SU-57, my favorite combination is one that was recommended to me by the devs. It's basically using a combination of the um, arm, I think it is, which is the seed missile, and then some anti-air missiles. So this is like the 5,000 meter R77. There's a lot to, to look through here, guys, <laughs> that you're gonna get used to. Now, I think it comes naturally with two R73s here, which are 2,000 meter range missiles. And then we've got three R77s if you want them. You can bring in more R37s, which are longer range, 8,000 meter um, range missiles. There's AGMs, which are air to ground missiles. The arm is the same one as before. So seed, you've got smart bombs, smart cluster and cruise missiles. But uh, yeah, I think what we're gonna do is we'll go for maybe the long range missiles and then the seed as well. Although actually it might be better if the missiles are roughly the same range as the seed. That makes it more manageable. So we'll whack some SU-57s in there as well. It's just a matter of deciding which ones you want more. Like, do you want more air superiority or do you want more bombers? And in this case, we're just gonna add an extra bomber and that's gonna be pretty much the battle group complete. Now we're not a max on the battle group. That's not a massive problem, but if there's like spaces where we can increase the amount of units we're bringing then you may as well so you know in the support we might be able to find a unit that's cheap that we can throw in like the drop here for example and we can make it like mostly smoke and then we can just launch smoke everywhere with that one particular unit that could be pretty handy sorry i just keep yeah, clicking the wrong button um we can add like actually we've already filled that so like recon's pretty much stacked. We could add the extra Sarmat there. Infantry's stacked, vehicles stacked, supplies or support stacked, heli and air not really able to put much more in there. So that's pretty much it. We're all done. And that's gonna be, I'm just gonna call it Russia V2 because this is gonna be the first uh, battle group that I use when I play again. So there you have it. That's gonna be my Russian deck moving into Broken Arrow. Uh, tell me what you guys think, if there's any recommendations that you guys have, or any units you think I maybe missed, or, um, I mean, missed putting in the deck. Like, I, this this particular video wasn't meant to go through every unit available, um, but just generally talk about what I think is good, and what I think is useful, what I think is worth trying out, and uh, I think we pretty much uh, hit the mark here. So, yeah, hopefully you like the look of this uh, battle group. I don't think there's a necessarily easy way for me to give you guys like a code to this or something just yet, but um, maybe I'll work that one out. Regardless, 
Hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.